So now we're going to now we're going to work a bunch of examples of using this method. So we'll start off with the volume of the solid formed by rotating the region bounded by y equals x or three x minus x squared and the x-axis about the line y equals negative one. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a reasonably accurate picture here. And so what we're gonna get is, we'll give ourselves a little bit of a sort of first quadrant, a little bit in the left quadrant, because we're gonna rotate this thing about the line. You know what, there's a typo on this slide. That is supposed to say about the line x equals one, not y equals one, x equals one. And so the line x equals, I'm saying one instead of negative one, typo and errors in talking. So x equals negative one, this is gonna be the line about which we are going to rotate our region. And then our region is gonna be three x minus x squared. Well, that's a parabola that's been inverted and shifted up a little bit. In particular, if you go one, two, three, and again, we're going by steps of one. So if we go one, two, one, two, three, yep. That will give you, and I think it's in the neighborhood of, uh, don't quote me on this, I'm not going to label the y-axis, that way I can't be wrong. There we go, we've got ourselves a parabola shifted uh, vertically by a bit and flipped over so that it's facing downward. And so as we rotate this, what kind of shells, what kind of a, uh, what kind of a region are we going to get? Well, we're going to get sort of this little, this piece is going to get rotated around this line over here. And as you spin it around that line, you're going to get a matching kind of bit over here. And this is all going to be, yep, looks just the same. And as you rotate it, you're going to get something that looks like this. And so you can kind of imagine it's not the best picture in the world. You're going to get some kind of a sort of a flat bottomed donut if you rotate that thing around. OK, so now I kind of understand the 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 region that I'm trying to calculate the volume of. And so let's just draw in blue what our slices look like. Well, if we thought about starting in the center of this thing, if I took just a slice right there, well, that would give me a shell that starts at the center, goes over there and kind of does half, like starts right in the middle of this thing. And if I then fill it in with slices like this, that's gonna just give me the right hand, sort of the outermost region of this donut and forget about the innermost region. So this is a case since we're rotating around a line that's not an axis, where you're gonna to need to take and start your slices over here at zero and continue going all the way over to three. So our limits of integration are gonna be from zero to three here. Um, and in my steps, my steps are a loose guideline here, right? I said identify the sh sketch a shell and radius and height and stuff, and but loose limits of integration, hey, I happen to think limits of integration would be helpful to figure out uh, first in this one. Well, so limits of integration, that tells me two things. Since I'm progressing along the x-axis, I know that my limit, my variable of integration is going to be dx. So I want all of my expressions to be in terms of x as well. So now, different color. Let's look at one particular shell. Let's just start here, arbitrary point there. And as I rotate this thing around, something like that, it's going to give me a shell over there, something to the tune of that. And so what should we look at first? The two things we need to identify for this thing is we need to identify the radius and the height. Well, you can do them in either order you like. Uh, I think height is the way I want to start here. I want, since we've decided we're integrating with respect to x, I want things to be in terms of x. And so maybe I'll go ahead and label these points. Well, if I make this just an arbitrary x from 0 to 3, and this point is x comma my top function, which is 3x minus x squared. So the top is my height there. And over here, I'm going to label that down here because I'm out of a bit of room there. Well, that is, well, it's x, but then the related y value is going to be 0. So how tall is this thing? Well, then this is going to be the bottom. So the thing stops, starts at the height of 3x minus x squared. So my top minus my bottom, 3x minus x squared minus my bottom of 0 gives us a height of 3x minus x squared. So now our radius. So how far is our radius? Careful with this. Um, 
it's fairly tempting to say that our radius is here. We're going to integrate from 0 to 3, right? And so the radius of that shell starts at 0 with the same of the integration. But if you look at the picture, you realize that that leaves out this additional distance for that radius. This whole red line, dotted and solid, this whole thing is my radius. So the first part of my radius, the dotted part of my radius, is always going to have a length of 1 because it's from negative 1 to 0. And then the solid part of my radius over here goes from 0 to x. So that's always going to have a distance of x. So you put that together, and your radius is going to be 1 plus x. All right, so we've got our limits of integration. We've got the height and the radius of our shell. And so the last thing, last things last, is to put this all together into our formula. And I'll write the formula. Volume equals integral uh, from a to b of 2 pi times our shell radius times our height of our shell. And then that's it, variable of integration. Filling this in, we get our volume is equal to 0 to 3 of 2 pi times my radius, which is 1 plus x, times my height, which is 3x minus x squared dx. And I'll probably uh, continue this calculation on to the next slide, but I might as well start it on this slide. Distributing this stuff out and combining like terms, we get, okay, we'll do that, 0 to 3. You know what, let's, let's put this 2 pi action out in front, so we'll leave that out in front. 2 pi, we'll come back to you later. Um, 1 times 3x gives me 3x. 1 times negative x squared is negative x squared. 3x times x is plus 3x squared. Uh, positive x times negative x squared is negative x to the third dx. Collecting some like terms, you have that volume is equal to 2 pi integral from 0 to 3 of uh, collecting like terms and writing things in descending power order, because I like to do that, negative x to the third plus 2x squared plus 3x dx. A series of power rules will get you 2 pi times the quantity negative x to the fourth um, over 4 plus 2 thirds x to the third plus 3 halves, whoops, 3 halves x to the half. Uh, that's not right. 3 halves x to the second is how you say that. Uh, evaluate all that jazz from 0 to 3. All right, so plug it in, 2 pi, uh, negative 3 to the fourth power over 4, plus 2 to the third power times 3 to the third power, plus 3 over 2 times 3 to the second power, end parenthesis, minus 2 pi. And once again, since these are all powers of x and we're plugging in 0, it's going to give us a bunch of sums of 0. So that's going to add to 0, not contributing anything. Uh, I may skip a little bit of the algebra here, but I'll work through some of it. This gives us negative 81 to the fourth power plus uh, 2 times 9 plus, we're going to end up with 27 over 2 here. And that is going to give us something. Well, you know what? Let's get common denominators and add together our fractions. We'll multiply our second guy by 2 over 2. And uh, that'll give us 2 pi. A negative 81 over 4 plus 18 plus 54 over 4. And then 81 negative and 54, put them together. We're going to end up with equals 2 pi negative 27 over 4 plus 18. 18 over 1, let's get common denominators here over 1. All right, so let's just show you what I did. These two added together. And now this guy, we get common denominators by multiplying 18 by 4 to get plus 72 over 4. We're going to add that stuff up, and we're going to end up with 2 pi times 45 over 4. The 4 is going to reduce a little bit, and that's going to give us that our final answer is 45 over 2 pi. And if you wanted to know that, what it was as an approximation, fire up a calculator. And that'll give you the decimal approximation. OK, another example. Example number two, volume of a solid of revolution formed by rotating a region bounded by 
x, the y equals x squared, x equals four, and the x axis about the y axis this time. Okay, so what are we gonna draw here? Let's, uh, I'll give myself a little bit of room so we can sketch kind of the three dimensional thing. If we're gonna go from, it looks like y equals x squared to x equals four, x equals four is gonna be over here, a vertical line, y equals x squared is gonna be the square root function. I'm sorry, y equals square root of x is gonna be the square root function there. And since four square root of is two, we know that that has height two there. And if we rotate this thing about the y-axis, what are we going to get? Well, we're gonna get the same shape on the other side and we're gonna get a round thing. And that on the top is gonna to be there and that's gonna be in the back. You're kind of gonna get a, a pillow with a round pillow with vertical sides where somebody has put a, a, a pin and, and punctured it and pushed that down straight in the middle straight in the middle, if you will. Um, so now let's take a look at what this, the region looks like. Uh, so, or just a single shell and then kind of get our height and our radius from that. So we know we have height two and then X is equal to four. So that looks like that. If we do just a single shell, take any point there, that's gonna give us something that looks like that, a nice cylinder centered at zero. So, what are our limits of integration or where are we gonna integrate from? Well, we're gonna generate this from zero to four, starting in the center of our region. As we generate cylinders all the way out, we're gonna fill in that region with related pieces on the other, on the opposite side. So we start at zero and go to four. That tells us that we're gonna be integrating with respect to X. So I want all my expressions to be in terms of X. And so what is the radius of my shell? Well, the radius of the shell is just however far you're along in the process of slicing from zero to four in the X direction. So radius R is equal to X. So that leaves us with height. And I find it helpful to label the points. And so this is gonna be X square root of X. So it looks like the top is gonna to be square root of X. And this point down here, uh, that point is going to be X comma zero. So the height at the top of my, uh, sli my uh, slice is going to be square root of x minus the bottom of the slice is zero. So square root of x is my height. Plug all that into our formula. Volume equals integrate from zero to four, two pi times our radius. Our radius is x times our height. Our height is the square root of x dx. Tidy that jazz up a little bit. What do we got? Well, we're working with square roots and x, so I'm going to turn everything into an exponent, 2 pi x to the first power, uh, square root of x is x to the half power dx. That gives us, you know what, let's pop that 2 pi outside again, 2 pi integral 0 to 4 of x to the first plus times x to the 1 half. You would add those exponents together. 1 plus 1 half gives us 3 halves x to the 3 halves dx, and we can integrate this with a power rule. Do that power rule, you get equals two pi uh, x to the add one to three halves, get five halves multiplied by the reciprocal, two fifths. All right, so we're gonna end up evaluating that from zero to four and that tidies up as four pi over five x to the five halves power evaluated from zero to four. And here, it might be helpful to remember that five halves power is the same thing as five, oh, I'm sorry, x, the five halves power is the same thing as x to the one half raised to the fifth, applying the power rule. So that's the square root of x, all raised to the fifth power. And since we're plugging in four and zero and four and zero are perfect square roots, maybe that's gonna be a helpful way to do this. So when I plug them in, I'm gonna replace this with square root of x raised to the fifth power. Okay, plugging in four, four pi over five, times square root of four, all raised to the fifth power, minus four pi over five, times square root of zero raised to the fifth power. Square root of zero is zero, so that whole expression is zero. Square root of four is two, two to the fifth is 32. 32 times four is going to give, wait a minute, let me say that right. Yeah, two to the fifth is 32. 32 times four gives us sort of coincidentally and makes me think I'm wrong. Uh, is equal to 132 pi over five. All right, next, uh, two slides, we only needed one. 
OK, so let's revisit that exact same example. Last time we did it about the y-axis, so we generated that sort of uh, vertical-sided round pillow with a uh, button in the middle of it. And now we're going to do this about the x-axis. So what's, what's that going to look like, that same region if we take it about the x-axis? OK, so y-axis up in the 2 in the direction, x-axis 4, square root function, vertical line at x equals 4. If we rotate this thing around the x-axis, we're going to get a cup. We're going to take that parabola looking. It's going to look like a sideways and parabola, parabola in the x direction. And we're going to get ourselves a cup. OK, so now two-dimensional drawing. So we can uh, figure out what, what our slices are going to look like and what are the cylinders that are going to generate this thing. Well, sometimes in the three-dimensional, it helps to draw a single cylinder. Well, here, we're not going to slice in the x direction. Our slices are going to be, uh, well, we're going to take our slices in the y direction. And when we rotate that slice around the y-axis, we're going to get a cylinder like that. And so now that we're thinking about this, where are we going to start our limits of integration? We're going to start at 0. We're going to integrate all the way up to 2. So this tells us dy. We're going to be integrating with respect to y. So we want all of our expressions in terms of y. So this slice transferred over to our two-dimensional picture is going to be our cylinder slice. And it's going to have radius this. And so if we're going to take our slices, from 0 to 2 in the y direction, then this that radius is going to be just equal to y, however far along you are in the process of slicing in the y direction from 0 to 2. So radius r equals y, and that helped. That's a good thing, because we want everything to be in terms of y, because we know that we're integrating with respect to y. And so now, the height. We need to express the height in terms of y. So what are these points? OK, so. This over here is the top, and this is the bottom of our slice. Because, you know, bigger x value versus smaller x value. OK, so what is this point? This would be, um, well, this is always 4. Uh, x is always equal to 4. And then what is the height of that thing? 4 comma y, right? We don't know what it is. It's, it's going to vary every time you take a new slice. And then, so what is our point at the bottom? So B, our bottom point, is going to be, well, what is that? I don't, I don't really know, right? But I want things to be in terms of Y, so let's put a Y in there. And this, this sort of height is actually in the X direction. So what I need to know is what to write over there for my height. OK, so how do I get that? Well, it comes from Y equals X, uh, square root of X square both sides, that gives you y squared equals x. So y equals square root of x is the same thing as x equals y squared. So y, comma, y squared comma y is our point there. And our lower height in terms of y is going to be y squared. So since our height is measured in terms of x, we're now interested in the x coordinate. And the difference of the x coordinate is going to give us the height of our slice. And so top minus bottom, the x height is always going to be 4 minus the x bottom is always going to be y squared. So 4 minus y squared. Put all of this stuff into our formula. Volume equals integral from 0 to 2, because we're doing this in the y direction, 2 pi times my radius. My radius is just y, like we said above. And our height, we just calculated as 4 minus y squared dy. Multiply this stuff out, do some power rules, and I'll leave those details to you because this is a fairly straightforward problem. You should come up with 8 pi for your answer. All right, let's do another example. There are six total examples, and we're getting, getting here. So this is example four. And we want to find the volume of the solid formed by rotating the region bounded by f of x equals square root of x and g of x equals one over x over one less than x, less than four, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to four, about the y-axis. That's a lot going on. So you know what? Fire up a graphing utility, graph this thing, and then sketch yourself a nice picture and see if we can understand what it's going to look like. Once we've done that, you'll see that. Uh, 
g of x, 1 over x, looks something like this. f of x equals square root of x looks something like this. And if we're interested in the x region from 1 to 4, then we'll cap these two guys off like that. And we're interested just in this region trapped. This is the region bounded by all of our given constraints. And where are we going to rotate this thing? We're going to rotate this thing about the y-axis. So what are we going to get? Over here, we're going to get the same shape. And when we connect the middles, we're going to get hollow. And then when we connect the bottom and the tops, we're going to get another uh, vertical sided kind of pillow donut thing, but it's going to have a hole in the center of it. And it's going to be kind of pinched together in the middles. OK, so now I understand what this thing is. Let's think about what, what type of a slice we're going to need to generate this volume. Well, I would start here. And just that tiny little point, if we, that would generate just that tiny little slice. And then if we work this way out, take a slice here, that'll give us a shell here. And then continuing to work, we'll go from one all the way up to four with our slices. We're going to slice in the x direction. So we're going to integrate with respect to x. So now we'll redraw our picture because that's gotten too cluttered, too muddled. And we've got one over x. And we've got x squared. Cap this thing off at four. They join at one. So a generic cylinder slice uh, goes right in here. And that's going to give us a cylinder. And that cylinder is going to have radius r. And it's going to have a height. And that height is going to be defined by these points, x comma square root of x and x comma 1 over x. So our radius. Careful on this one. Don't think that we have to add an extra 1 for this region because we're starting at 1 and going to 4. So what is this generic slice point? It's always going to be the x value, however far along you are in the x uh, axis. So my radius is just going to be r equals x. And my height, or similar as before, the top's up here, the bottom's down here. My height is defined in terms of x as square root of x minus 1 over x. Put all of that together into our formula. We have volume equals integral from 1 to 4 of 2 pi times my radius. My radius is just x. And my height is square root of x minus 1 over x dx. Now, when we're going to algebra this thing, since we're dealing with x to the first power and a square root and a 1 over x, we're going to turn these things into, um, oh, let's just see what we do. All right, distribute this jazz out. Pop that 2 pi out, because that's a nice thing to do. You don't have to, but I like to. x times square root of x. We saw in the last example previously that that becomes x to the 3 halves, because you add 1 and 1 half fractional exponent for the square root. x times 1 over x, x times 1 over x. You guys, everybody, yeah, reduces away. We end up with minus 1, minus 1 dx. Integrate that, get 2 pi um, x to the, you know what, let's do it like that. 2 pi x to the add 1. So we got 5 halves multiplied by the reciprocal. 2 fifths minus integral of 1 is just x. Evaluate that from 1 to 4. Uh, we don't have a 0 on the bottom, so we got to actually do the math here. Once again, 5 halves is the same thing as the square root of x raised to the fifth power. And since 1 and 4 are nice square roots, I'm going to evaluate that this way. 2 pi, big parentheses, 2 fifths times square root of 4 to the fifth power, minus 4, end parenthesis. Subtract 2 pi, big parenthesis. Now we'll plug in 1, 2 fifths times square root of 1 to the fifth power, minus, well, just 1. All right, uh, 1 to any power, and square root of 1 is 1, 1 is just 1, so that's 2 fifths minus 1. 2 fifths minus 5 fifths uh, gives us 2 pi times negative three-fifths. Now over here, uh, as we saw, kind of mentioned before, square root of two, four is two, two to the fifth is 32. 32 times two is 64 fifths. So we're going to get equals two pi square bracket, 64 fifths minus four. 
Well, four as over fifth power is going to be 20 over five. And we'll continue this on the next slide. And so we get equals uh, two pi. 64 fifths minus 20 fifths is 44 fifths plus six fifths pi. Uh, when you distribute negative two times negative three fifths, you get positive six fifths pi. Um, all right, two times 44 is 88 over five pi plus six over five pi. Add 88 and six, get something to the tune of 94 pi over five. All right, so we'll stop those examples here.